giving all praises to God, who's the head ruler over my life, uh, to Pastor Michael Oedokin, uh, in his absence, to these my brothers that share the great passion of preaching the gospel and telling the story in its entirety, to these deacons, to this awesome great youth department that stand behind me. I am, I am so glad to be back here. I see some new faces that I don't recognize, and so for those of all that don't know me, no, I am not a guest. I am not a guest person that is here, but I am Minister Allen, the youth pastor that's over this great youth department here, amen. Right. Uh, the Lord has, for the last seven months, had my wife and I on an assignment at another campus where I served as interim pastor, and that assignment is now over, and we are back home, yeah. amen. Yeah. I, want to, I, want to, I want to thank, I want to thank all those that stepped up to the plate in our absence to make sure that things ran smoothly in our, in our absence, and we say thank you. I would not begin to call names because I would leave one out, but just to those you know who you are, you know what you did, and for that we just say thank you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now that all the accolades are out of the way, what's up, y'all? How y'all doing? <laughs> Amen. Amen. It is good to see my Good Hope family again amen your smiling faces i i see some people got some new smiles that means they've been to the dentist that means god is yet still blessing with some insurance hallelujah bless your name god is is good amen i don't understand how it is we can sit in church and have frowns on our face because I don't know, but, but whenever Christmas time comes around and somebody gives me something, I will never frown up at it. Even if it's something that I didn't want, but it was something that was unexpected. So for that, I'm just grateful. And I got a, I got a smile from ear to ear. Amen? Amen? And so every time you wake up, that's a gift from God that was unexpected. So anytime you're able to wake up and clothe in your right mind, I thought I would have got a little help right there. But anytime you are able to wake up and clothe in your right mind, uh, you ought to be able to have a smile on your face because that was something that was unexpected. If you don't believe me, ask the family that's at King Tears right now. Ask the family that's at All Faith right now. Ask that family that's sitting there going to identify one of their loved ones that's at the morgue. Uh, pass by the cemetery and ask one of them if they thought they would be here on today. So anytime you're able to come into the house of God, that's reason enough right there to give him some praise. Now, I do, I do realize that we have some seasonal Christians that uh, in the fall, it's a struggle for them to come to church because they have what they call the NFL. And some, some, let's just be for real, I was praying that I not be too long because the NFL has started, amen? And so that I don't tax you too long and you be struggling on if you should stay or if you should go. Let me remind you, though, that the Cowboys do play at 3 o'clock, so we got just a little bit of time. Amen? Amen. Amen. I know some of y'all saying I'm not no Cowboy fan, but that's all right. That's all right. There is room for you on the bench. Amen. Uh, Mark's Gospel. Mark's Gospel, uh, beginning chapter 1. Chapter 1, Mark's Gospel. Uh, let's... Let's start off at the conversation at about verse 40. If you have it, if you'll stand on your feet for the reading of God's word, if you're able to, start the conversation at about verse 40 of Mark's Gospel, chapter 1. When you have it, say amen. amen. And it reads, Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him, and saying to him, if you are willing, hmm, you can make me clean. Then Jesus moved with compassion. Hmm. 
stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. Hmm. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed and straight, strictly warned him and sent him away at once and said to him, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go your way, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing those things which Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Verse 45 says, and however, he went out and he began to proclaim it freely and spread it the matter and so that Jesus could no longer openly enter the city, but was outside in a desert place. And they came to him from every direction. 45 said, uh, I mean, 44 uh, says that see that you say nothing to anyone. 45 says, however, he went out and began to proclaim it freely. If you would, if you would look at your neighbor, because you're going to talk to him a couple of more times, so if you don't know him, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, and say, neighbor, when I think about all the things that God has done for me, I just can't keep it to myself. Oh, that was the wrong day, but look at somebody else and put your preacher voice on and say, neighbor, when I think about all the things God has done for me, I just can't keep it to myself. You may be seated. You may be seated. Y'all sit down. Sit down. Y'all stop. Hold up now. I'm a big horse. I ain't got a lot of wind. One thing that I have come to find out that all of us in here have in common, we all come from various ages, backgrounds, cultures, beliefs. But one thing that we all have in, in common besides liking chicken <laughs> is that we are all in here like some good juicy gossip. Oh, I thought I was going to get a little bit more amens than that. I said we all in here like some good juicy gossip. Uh, if we want to, to be uh, witnesses or not, the fact is that we, we like some good juicy gossip. You know, I, I ain't talking about like the, the regular gossip, but I'm talking about some, some good gossip. Uh, that type of gossip that when, when me and my wife first openly started dating and the first time she rode with me here to the church in my truck and I opened the door for her, you know, that, that type of gossip, you know. Uh, that type of gossip, that uh, when you call somebody or you pull somebody over to the corner, they say, girl, did you hear? Yeah. Or when you see somebody that says, man, let me tell you. <laughs> or my favorite one that church folk like to use all the time is, I don't gossip. But, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and, and what I've come to find out is, is, that, uh, is that it's easy for church folks to spread gossip, you know. Oh, yeah. uh, 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 not too long ago, I heard, I heard, I heard some things that, that, that me, me and my wife had got into it with, with Pastor Owen, and that's why we had, had left the church, you know, that, 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 type of, that type of gossip, you know, the things that just go around. But, 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 but what I try to figure out is, is how is it that we as Christians can, can spread gossip, but we can't spread the gospel? Uh, and, 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 I, uh, and my mind would begin to wonder, is, what would this world be like? Because it's not just here at Good Hope, but, but it's abroad in every church and in every culture that you go to. Gossip is spread abroad. So I wonder if, if Christians, uh, not, not Baptists, not, not Pentecostal, not Methodist, not Catholics, but if Christians would, would spread the gospel like they spread gossip, uh, what kind of world would this be? Uh, I'm trying to preach here. I'm trying to preach, but they just don't want to help me. Uh, 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 oh, what, 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 what kind of what kind of world would we live in? And, and what's so sad now is that is that growing up, and when I was a little child, growing up, uh, the only way that gospel gossip could spread was through the, what they called the telephone. 
People could not wait to get home to, to pick up the phone. You know, you know, Big Mom and them, they, they had, before they, they laid their head down and, and, and turned in for the night, they had to, to pick that phone up and they had to call their best friend and say, now don't tell nobody, but, but this is what I, I heard right here happen today at church. Or this is what I heard that happened in, in so-and-so, so-and-so's house. But now that we, we live in a damn age of, of technology now, now they have what they call social media. Social media has become, has become a, a fan base that, that can spread go, the goss, gossip all the way around. You know, it can go from the East Coast to the West Coast with, in a matter of seconds by a simple post. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, 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 about with, on social media uh, sites like Facebook, Instagram. Snapchat, Twitter, and for those that are over 40, MySpace. You know, uh, 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 it, it, it amazes me on, on how on Facebook we can, we can put everything up under the sun, but, but it seems like we're slow to spread the gospel, but we're quick to spread gossip. We'll, we'll, we'll like a post, we'll share a post, uh, especially if it's some good juicy stuff. You, you know, don't, 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 let, don't let somebody come up here today and say that they're leaving their husband or they're leaving their wife due to infidelity within the marriage. Uh, before service was even over, y'all would pick up your phones and you would be posting in Texas about, girl, did you see this? And now we live in an age now that, that they don't even have to write it no more. But what they'll do is they'll pick up their phone and they'll, they'll be like, and they'll, they'll show the video. Don't, don't let me and my wife on the parking lot get into a confrontation because y'all will be ready to videotape it and say, mm, 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 mm. Christians should not act like that. That's a, that's a shame. But, 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 but you're slow to post when, when somebody comes up here to the altar and gives a life to Christ. You're, you're slow to post when, when somebody that was dealing with an addiction gets delivered. You're, you're slow to post that type of stuff. But gossip, you're, you're quick to post it. And I wonder, I wonder what kind of world would this be if we were to spread the gospel like we spread gossip. That I not hold you, not hold you too long. Here it is that Jesus now is beginning his ministry. And he's going from town to town preaching repentance. Uh, the time is at hand that you need to repent and turn from your sinful ways. And, 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 and like, like most people, uh, Jesus began to heal the sick and, and those that were demon possessed. He, be, he began to cast out demons. And, and by this time, Jesus has begun to make a name for himself. And, and anytime somebody's passing out something for free, it don't, it don't take much for the word to get around. And then you got a crowd. So here it is that, that wherever Jesus went, that there was a crowd of people that, that gathered because they didn't want the, the message, but they just wanted what he had for them. And so, so, so they, were, they were missing the whole message, but, but they were there because they brought their lame children. They, they brought those that was crippled. They brought those that was demon-possessed demon to Jesus to the point that Jesus got tired. Mm -hmm. Anybody know that in ministry there are times that you just don't want to deal with people. You just, you just don't want to, you don't want to talk to nobody else. You, you just don't want to, you don't want to be around. Anybody ever had, had, had been on a job and where you're the only source of, of Christianity that somebody that's unchurched knows. And so every time they're going through something, here they come with their problems and they sitting at your desk and you can't get no work done because they sitting in your office and, and your office say administrator, but it seems like they read counselor because they bringing all their problems and all their situations. That can become tiresome sometimes. So what you did, what you do is you find yourself sitting in the janitor's closet because you don't want to be bothered. You find yourself sitting in your car on, on your lunch break in the garage and all those are 103 degrees in Texas. You, you're sitting there with your AC running because you just don't want to be bothered. And so Jesus, Jesus here now, is uh, he's, he's going off to a desert place. And every time he comes back, he says, let's go to the next city. Yeah. To the point that, that Jesus tells his disciples, man, look here. I, I don't want to check in no Holiday Inn. I don't want to check into the Embassy Suites. I, I, I don't want to go to nowhere famous. I, I just want to get away. I just want, want time to, my, to myself. And, and, so, and so Peter says, hey, man, let's, let's, go to, let's go to my mother-in-law house. Jesus walks into the mother-in-law house. Peter greets his wife. The first thing uh, he notices is that Peter's mother-in-law is laying there ill. And so Jesus walks up 
to her hand, walks up and grabs her by the hand and, and to, tells her to be healed. And the fever left her body immediately. Mm. And so when the fever left her body, then uh, she began to get up and serve. But then when I looked at the text, I said something that the text wasn't saying. So I had to do a little bit of deeper research. And, 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 and then uh, it didn't tell me what, what, what I thought it would, but, but I could put it, put it all together and I figured out that, that somebody had to tell somebody that Jesus was at Peter's house. And so that the crowd began to form outside uh, to the fact that now Jesus, uh, where he thought he could find a place to rest, is now having to heal those that are sick, having to heal those that are lame. And uh, the only thing that I could come up with was that it was Peter's mother-in-law. Because anytime Jesus does something for you, you got to tell somebody. You just can't keep it to yourself. And, and, and so, so the Bible says that she immediately began to, she got up and she began to serve Jesus. Uh, and, and I don't know about you, but, but that's a good point right there that you need to know that anytime the Lord does something for you, you ought to be able to get back up and be willing to give back what God has given you. But what happens is many times we, we come for the benefits, we come for the attributes of Christ, but, but we never want to be a part of the body of Christ. Well, Say something, Alan. I'm trying to right. just not catch it there. Uh, 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 we, we, we never, we never want, to, want, to, want to interact and intermingle in worship. We never want to, want, we just want to come and be pew members. We never want to get part of a ministry. We never want to do no work. All we never right. want to get down in the ditches. All we right. just want to just sit there and be able to say that we came to church. Yeah, yeah. But that's not Christianity. You got to be able to work. You got to be able to spread the good news. That's what being a disciple is all about, is going out and being able to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. And so here it is that, that, that Peter, Peter's mother-in-law is now serving him. And now there's a line of people outside to the point that, that, that Jesus gets tired. And so in the, wee early, uh, in the wee hours of the morning, Jesus slips off and leaves. Now, I could just imagine I wasn't there, but with my Holy Ghost imagination... I can imagine that the conversation went a little like this. Peter's mother-in-law gets up. She in there. She cooking eggs and she cooking bacon and she making salmon croquette. Got the burr rabbit syrup out there and, and she got biscuits and she's doing it up. And, and she says, uh, Peter, go in there and get your friend. And she done went and told all her friends because she been on, on the phone all night long. She posted in Texas and she wanted to let everybody know that Jesus is in the house. And, and so she, she wants to be known that, that she's the one that's serving Jesus. And, and so Peter goes in there and says, hey, Jesus is gone. And so, so Peter, mother, I'm like, where, where, where is he at? Where? So then Peter wakes up John. Hey, John, where, where Jesus go? Where? Man, I don't know. I was asleep. Uh, Thomas, get up. Where, where Jesus? Man, I don't know. Uh, uh, Matthew, Mark, where, where Jesus? I, I, I don't know. So now they have put a band together that they're going to look for Jesus. Because you got to understand, this is Peter's mother-in-law's house. Yeah. And, and, and then if this is Peter's mother-in-law's house, then that means that Peter's wife is there. And so any husband in here knows what it's like when your wife is upset because her mama is upset. And so now the husband is like, Peter, like, come on, man. So I can just imagine that Peter is the one that's leading the crusade saying, we got to find Jesus. Uh -huh. So here it is that they go out to a desert place. And Jesus is there kneeling and praying. Mm -hmm. Peter said, hey, man. Hey, come on, man. Uh, Mom and the mom and the cooked a good old meal. You need to come. And, and Jesus is like, no, 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 no. Let's just let's just go to the next village, cause that's not what I'm here for. I I I didn't come just to to, to heal the people. I, I I came that I may be able to preach repentance, that they would change from their ways, and and, and they're not changing it. Uh, if all I'm doing is just giving out healing, that they're not changing it. They're, they're not wanting to repent. They're not they're not wanting to turn to my Father. They, all they want is just the attributes. So Jesus said, let's go. So then Jesus leaves and. He goes off to the synagogue. And we know that the synagogue represents the church. Yeah. Yeah. So then after Jesus then went and tore up an 11 o'clock service uh, on his way out from the synagogue on his way to the next town. Come on, come on. Here it is that a leopard runs up to him. Uh -huh. And the leopard falling down on his knees saying, Lord, if you are willing, have mercy on me and cleanse me. Yeah. Now, now, now there's, there's, a lot of, there's, a, there's a lot of meat in there. Let's break this down. Uh, first of all, uh, the reason why you're not shouting is because you don't understand what leprosy was. Well, let me help you. Come here. Uh, leprosy was one that, there was a skin condition 
that started out as a little red dot. And before long, it would begin to turn into a, a, a white, bigger dot. And, and before long, it would spread all over your body to the point that, that your nose would begin to rot, that your teeth would begin to fall out, that your eye sockets would, would begin to, your eyes would begin to droop in the back of your skull, uh, your hair and stuff would fall. It made you uh, feeble. It made, it made your skin all, all clammy and dirty. And so 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 those that, that were with leprosy, they had to wear mourning clothes. Uh, they had to ring bells that said unclean because the Mosaic law said that anybody that was possessed with leprosy Leprosy could not be a, a part of common people, but they had to be a far off. They weren't allowed to be uh, where, where everybody else that was considered clean at. You, uh, I mean, most of us in here, we should understand uh, from our forefathers how that must feel. Uh, not allowed to go through the front door, but you, you had to go to the back door. You, you weren't allowed to be in the big house, but you, you had to stay out in the field all because of the color of your skin. Uh, and, and so here it is. That, that this leopard here has done heard about what Jesus is doing uh, and walks up to Jesus and falls down on his feet and says, Lord, if you are willing. He didn't say, Lord, if you're, if you're able. He didn't even say, Lord, would you please? But he said, Lord, if you are willing. Uh, let me help you why, why he would use that terminology because, because leprosy during this time was, was looked upon as a punishment from God. Because leprosy is much like sin. Uh, you know, you know, sin doesn't just, you don't go a full-blown sinner overnight, but, but sin starts off real small. You, you know, no, sin starts off at, as just a, a little sip of wine at happy hour with your friends. And, and when wine doesn't do it, uh, then you move on to something a little lighter, like a Bud Ice or Budweiser. Uh, when, when, when Bud Ice and Budweiser don't do it, then you want to sip on a little Jack. You want to slip on a little, a, a, a little uh, 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 Baker's Mark. You want to you wanna slip on some Crown. You want to you wanna slip on some E&J. You, you know what I'm saying? And now you become a full-blown alcoholic. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Well, maybe that's not your conviction. Uh, uh, sin has a way of, it starts off as a friendly wave while you're at work. Hey, hey, girl, how you doing? Hey, yeah. Goes from a wave to, yeah, yeah you want my number? Uh, I'm married, though, but yeah, girl, we work together. Yeah, yeah. Goes from a simple, you got my number to, you want to do lunch? I ain't got no money. Are you going to buy today? Uh, oh, yeah, yes. Nah, she ain't going to buy today. Goes from that to now you're, you're, you're texting in the midnight hour. Going from texting in the midnight hour, now you're, 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 you're creeping. And goes from creeping, now you're in a full-blown affair. Uh, 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 maybe, maybe, maybe that's not where you're at neither. Uh, 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 sin has a way of, of, of coming in and, and you're not really smoking it, but you're around everybody else getting contact. Goes from getting the contact to saying, well, well, I, I'll just hit it just once. Like they say, I, I won't inhale, I'll only exhale. <laughs> uh, uh, goes, goes from that to now, now you're a full-blown pothead. You know, sin has a way of just creeping up on you. And so, and so what they were looking at, this was a punishment from God. So this, this leopard comes to Jesus and said, Lord, if you are willing. And my question is here, uh, is that how many of us have been in a place to where we've had to go to the Lord and say, Lord, if you are willing. Uh, I, I, I know that many times before I, I have said that I'm going to turn my life around. Many, many times before I've said that, that I, I, I won't go to that hotel no more. Many times I've said I, I won't go to happy hour. I won't, I won't be drinking at the house no more. Many times I've said I won't be, won't be smoking no more. But, but Lord, 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 this time I, I'm, I'm changing. I'm turning it around. Lord, if you are willing. How many of us have been in a predicament to where we're saying, Lord, if you're just willing. Lord, I know I, I've messed up, but Lord, if you're willing. Lord, I, I know that, 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 that I shouldn't have, shouldn't have did what I did, but Lord, if you are willing. Lord, Lord I know I, I made a lot of promises before, but, but Lord, if you are willing. Yeah. Then he says, he says to cleanse me. And then you have to look at the word cleanse. Because the, the way he, he phrased it means very, it's very important because 
He didn't say, Lord, if you would just heal me. Because anytime you've been healed, then that means that it can come back again. Anybody ever had the flu? And you go to the doctor, you take some antibiotics, but then two years later, the flu come back. Huh? So, so, so the, the, the leopard is not saying, Lord, if you would uh, heal me. But he's saying, Lord, cleanse me. It means take it all away. Take it all out. Uh, take, take, take that desire to be with somebody else besides my, my spouse away. Uh, take that desire, that, that taste for alcohol out of my mouth. Uh, take take, take that, that, that addiction away out of me. Uh, take it all out. Lord, if you would just cleanse me. Lord, if you're willing. He, was, he understood that he was undeserving. Because you got to understand that he is now, he's just not one with leprosy, but he is one with full-blown leprosy. So that means that his facial features are at the max. Uh, his, his nose and stuff is beginning to fall off. His skin is peeling. His fingernails is falling out. He's a gruesome sight to look at. And he's saying, Lord, if you are willing, Jesus, having compassion on him, saying, Lord, he says, I am. And then he goes and he lays his hands on him. Yeah. You missed the shout. Let me help you. Come here. Uh, you got to understand, once again, let's rewind. Uh, the Mosaic Law says that anybody that was considered to be a leopard could not be touched, could not be amongst everyone. So Jesus is now telling him, uh, and sh not only is he telling him that you're clean, but he's showing them, because you got to understand that it says that the master could not touch anything that was unclean. Yeah. And so the, he said, I am willing, you're clean, and then lay his hands on yeah. Prove it to the man that not only are you clean, but I'm going to show you because I'm going to lay my hands on you. You missed it. Let me help you again. Uh, so here it is that the Mosaic law says that anything that was considered unclean that Jesus could not touch. But then the Bible says that he laid his hands on him. Okay, okay, okay. Let me help you. Uh, uh, how many of us in here remember what it felt like when Jesus laid their hands on you? Uh, 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 how many of us can, can, can remember the feeling that we had when, when Jesus laid his hand? Because you got to understand, before this time, this leopard had been touched by a lot of people. But, but now, when Jesus lays his hands on you, it's something different that takes over. When Jesus lays his hands on you, you don't have a desire to go to the club no more. When Jesus lays his hands on you, you don't want to look at another woman or another man no more. When Jesus lays his hands on you, you don't want to drink no more. When Jesus lays his hands on you, you don't talk the same. When Jesus lays his hands on you, your walk is different. When, when Jesus lays his hands on you, your vision is different when Jesus lays his hand. So the Bible said that he laid his hands on him. And I'm so glad that I serve a God that has compassion. That even in my sin, even in my sick, my, my, my sinful, my sick ways, that God will come and have compassion on me and lay his hands yeah. on me. Jesus laid his hands on him and told him, You are cleansed. So then the the man gets up and Jesus says, because of the law, because you got to understand that Jesus said that I did not come to change the law, but I just came to fulfill the law. Uh -huh. And so, so Jesus tells the leper to go show yourself to the priest because you have to understand in the text in Leviticus chapter 13, it talks about lepers and it talks about how when they were sick, if they were to be healed, they, they would have to go back and show themselves to the priest. The priest would have to examine them and then would either pronounce them to be clean or unclean. So basically what Jesus was telling them, man, go back and get your papers. Go get your papers that say that you're clean. Go get your freedom papers. Go get your papers that, 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 that you are no longer in bondage. You, you are no longer a slave to this, but now you are free from this. Uh, and, and, and I don't know about you, but slavery, I mean, uh, sin has a way of putting you in slavery. If you don't believe me, go down to 12th Street and ask a crackhead and see if they are not in slavery and bondage. Uh, freedom, uh, freedom, sin has a way of making you free from it all. So Jesus said, go get your papers. Go get your papers that say that you're free. And so when, 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 when the man that had leprosy got up, being so excited that but because whenever Jesus lays his hands on you, because the Bible even said it, it was something that happened immediately. 
you know, he, he didn't have to wait two or three weeks. He didn't have to go to no 12-step program. He didn't have to go through no 32-week no treatment program. But, but the Bible said that it happened immediately. So, so that means that when the leper got up after Jesus laid his hands on him, he looked down at his hands. And his hands looked new. He looked down at his arms and his, and his arms looked new. He had a new walk. And he had a new talk. Uh, his vocal cords was ready. Uh, and, and so he was so excited about what Jesus did for him that, that he missed the part where Jesus said, hey, man, don't go tell nobody. Uh, but, but the man with, uh, I, I can just imagine, you got to understand that, that if he's in full-blown leprosy, that he's been dealing with this condition for maybe 13 to 15 years. Uh, and so now, here it is, he's been cut off from his family, he's been cut off from his friends, he was broke because he couldn't get no job. All he could do was just hang with those that were some bottom feeders, some low life, because they were all in the same condition. But now he's been free. So he's excited. He's happy, and he runs back to the town on his way to show the priest. He said, hey, man, y'all got to go see a man. Y'all yeah. got to go see a man. Y'all got to see this man that, 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 that's healing. Uh, you got to go see this man that has a message. You got to go see it. And I don't know about you, but, but I, I could just imagine how it is. Uh, I, I can remember how I felt when the Lord touched me. I can remember how, how it was when the Lord laid his hands on me. I wanted to tell everybody that I knew about Jesus Christ. Uh, and I wonder, is there anybody in here beside myself that knows how it would feel when Jesus touches you? Can I get about five or six witnesses that know what it was like when the Lord turned your life around? Uh, you had to tell somebody about how good God had been to you. I can see y'all ready to go. Good evening, Good Hope. God bless you real good. I'm going to leave you alone now. But I want to tell you, it's one last story. It's about a man that was a retired veterinarian. This man had been dealing with dogs for over 30 some years. He was known from town to town about dealing with dogs. He would go and he would work on the finest of dogs, prize winning dogs. He was this famous veterinarian. Now that he was retired, he was in the town, in the town, and uh, on his way back to his house, he uh, saw a dog that was in the alleyway. Now this dog was just a mangy mutt. This dog, his bones were showing. Uh, this dog could barely stand. This veterinarian, having compassion on this dog, uh, runs over to the dog, stoops down and picks him up and puts him in his arms. Uh, you're going to help me, aren't you? And uh, took the dog back to his house. Uh, over a couple of months, uh, the man nursed the dog back to health. Uh, he gave him food and gave him water. He gave him, he gave him uh, his shots and everything that he needed. Uh, wasn't too long uh, before that dog began to run around the backyard. Uh, that dog was a healthy dog. Uh, that dog was a happy dog. Uh, wagging his tail from side to side. Uh, well, uh, one morning, uh, the man got up, uh, went to the backyard, and whistled for his dog. Uh, and the dog was nowhere to be found. And so the man went to the front yard and whistled for his dog. Uh, and the dog was nowhere to be found. Uh, and now the man is getting a little upset and discouraged. Uh, man is saying to himself, all the things uh, that I've done for that dog. Uh, and now he going to run off like this. Uh, and uh, right before uh, the man uh, got ready to shut the door, uh, he heard a noise uh, coming up the road. Uh, he heard uh, some barking coming up the road. Uh, the man opened up the door and he saw his little dog uh, running up the road. Uh, but behind him uh, was some more little dogs. Uh, he had some broken down chihuahuas. Uh, he had some pit bulls that had been in some fights. Uh, 
He has some lame rock wallers. Uh, he has some Doberman pinchers. Uh, and I don't know about you, but it's almost like that little dog was saying, uh, come see a man uh, that can heal your sin sick soul. Come see a man uh, that can put you back together again. Come see a man uh, that whatever your condition is, uh, he can heal you. Uh, he can deliver you. Uh, and I just wonder uh, if a dog can wag his tail uh, and be excited uh, about what a veterinarian did for him. How many of us uh, in here this morning uh, can get excited uh, about what God uh, has done for them? Uh, is there anybody uh, that's in here this morning uh, that know that uh, if it was not for the Lord, uh, I don't know where I would be. Uh, I was lost, uh, seeking deep in sin, uh, far from the peaceful shore, seen uh, within, uh, seeking to rise no more. But, but the master of the sea uh, he heard my despairing cry and from the waters he lifted me uh, and saved uh, am I and that's why uh, I can't help it uh, I can't help it uh, I gotta tell somebody about how good God has been uh, I gotta run uh, and tell it uh, I'll tell it uh, from the mountaintops uh, I'll tell it from the valley lows uh, I'll tell it on the east coast uh, I'll tell it on the west coast and if you play with me, I, I tell you in good hope this morning, God, I said God, I said God has been good to me. Can I get about five witnesses? I'll make six that can just wave their hand and say, you don't know like I know how good God has been to me. You, if you can't tell it, let me tell it. God has been good to me. Anybody in here know that God has been good to him? I can't keep it to myself. I got to tell somebody. God has been just that good. I said God has been just that good. God made ways out of no way. God put food on my table. God opened doors for me. God saved my children. God saved my marriage. I got to tell somebody how good God has been. I can't help it. I'm like that dog. I don't have no tail, but I can wave my hands. I can say that God, I said God, I said God has been good to me. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say you don't know like I know just how good God has been. That was the wrong one. Look at somebody else and say, you don't know like I know just how good God has been. He's been good. He's been good. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. He's been good. He's good. He's good on Monday. Good on Tuesday. He's good on Wednesday. He's good on Thursday. Good on Friday. He's good on Saturday. And Sunday morning. Right now at Good Hope. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. See ya. Praise the Lord, saints. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's good all day. Every day. Every second. Every minute. You ought to go tell somebody just how good God is. Amen. Amen. At this time. Amen. Uh, we're, is, amen. We're here at the time to where the word has been spoken. Amen. And if, he, if the man of God has said something that has touched your heart, amen, and you have a testimony that you would like to share with us, amen, the chairs are open for you at this time. If you would like for someone to just touch and agree with you, 
amen in prayer amen the chairs are open even if you don't want to come up to the front if you want to just raise your hand we will come to you amen the word has been spoke amen the word has been spoken and we have enjoyed what god has had to say amen amen so we don't going to stand before you long amen but the chairs are open amen done so much for me i cannot tell it all I cannot tell it all I cannot tell it all it's done so much for me i cannot tell it all it's taken all my sins away it's done so much for me i cannot tell it all can I tell it all? Can I tell it all? He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. He's taken all my sins away. Oh, he's done so much for me. Can I tell it all? Can I tell it all? I cannot tell it all. He's done so much for me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Have y'all enjoyed yourself thus far this morning? Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Truly, it was a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. The word that was spoken this morning, it was rich. Amen. And it was just what I needed. Amen. I can't speak for everybody, but I can tell you it was just what I needed. I know the next time God blesses me, next time he do something for me, don't be upset if I run up in your face and I tell you about it. I'm going to be just overly excited because I want it again. Amen. Amen. Grateful people get blessed all the time. Amen. And it's because of how grateful and how thankful that you are that people want to continue to bless you or be around you. And just think about how much more God will bless you because you were just that more grateful and thankful to him. Amen. Praise the Lord. I won't be before you any more time. I'm going to turn it back over to the hands of the speaker for our benediction and announcement. Come on, let the church say amen. amen. Oh, we could do better than that. Let the church say amen again. Amen. amen. The announcements are in your program. Only one that I see that needs emphasis at this time would be at this evening at the 330 hour. Uh, the youth department will be guest at the St. Edward's Baptist Church for the youth annual. Amen. Amen. Our own Pastor O will be preaching. And it's something that we go to every year. And I know that he would be delighted and excited to see y'all come out. Amen. Amen. Uh, St. Edward's is located in Montopolis, right there on Montopolis Drive. And so that the van will be leaving here, I believe, at... Digging Day, Lawanda, 245, 245. So if you if you uh, don't know where you're going or you want to follow us, you can you can follow us over there at 245 today. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, lunch will be provided for the youth, the youth, the youth, those young people, those ages 18 to zero, the youth, a, the youth, the youth. <laughs> Lunch is provided for the youth that will be go will be will be going to Saint that will be going to Saint Edwards this evening and then that that is left over for those workers and sponsors that will be going. Amen. And then for everybody else that will be going to to Saint Edwards this evening. Amen. Uh, we want you to come out and and, and be a part of that. Uh, October the tenth is fall revival beginning each night at seven p.m. And we know that our guest preachers, uh, that MC Walker, amen. I think it has been mentioned, but it would not hurt to mention again that we keep the Barr family in our prayers, amen. Uh, Deacon Barr is in the hospital, 
And so we want to make sure that we lift that family up. Uh, many families are suffering from bereavement at this time. And so we ask that all families that you, when you say your prayers on tonight, that you would just lift up every family. Amen. Amen. I do believe that that is all that we have. Uh, if, if not, then look in your program. And there, oh, church anniversary. Uh, I'm going to ask Minister Morgan to come and put emphasis on this because he knows more about it than I do. But something about the, the if you pay your 143, it's a good announcement. All right. <clears throat> this is on behalf of the church anniversary committee. Uh, we received good news that each year we ask everyone for uh, $1 for every year the church has been in existence. And this year is $143. But we're also having a banquet this year. And if you pay your $143, that goes towards two banquet tickets uh, uh, for the church anniversary. So that, I don't know, that's shout news right there. Yeah. That the, that the, uh, the $143 also covers the banquet tickets. And we encourage everyone to get your banquet tickets because we're going to have a great time on this year. And again, we refer you to the announcements that's in the program. Amen. Also, it was brought to my attention September the 30th. Uh, here at the church, uh, we will be hosting the St. John District Prayer Breakfast. Amen. And uh, one thing that we never want to do is we never want to invite people to our house and we not be here. Amen. That's just plain rude. Amen. Don't invite me to your house and you not there. Amen. I don't care if you do tell me to go on in. No, you not there. This is your house. And so we don't want to invite people here. And so we want to ask each and every one of you, if you're willing, if you'll come out, uh, that will be the youth department. But we want you to come and see and support that in, in that endeavor. Amen. Amen. Time has been well spent. Uh, let us. Oh, OK. See, all these announcements ain't on here. Uh, all, all, all the men, y'all know how we do. Stand up. Stand all. If you a man, stand up. All men, stand up. All. Some of y'all are still skeptical. OK, we praying. Uh, all men, all men, young men, old men, if you a male, stand up. Some, okay, everybody stand Okay, because some of y'all moving slow like y'all didn't know. Amen. <laughs> men's choir rehearsal. Repeat, say men's choir rehearsal. <laughs> Woo, y'all like, hurry up. <laughs> men's choir rehearsal. <laughs> Tuesday night, <laughs> 7 p.m. See, some of y'all, y'all didn't want to say that. Now, for one, I ain't going to point him out. One brother didn't talk because he's going to say he didn't know. But let's say it again. Men's choir rehearsal, Tuesday night, 7 p.m. All right. Now, everybody else stand. We're going to say our doxology. We're going we're gonna to depart from this place. Amen. Let us begin. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depths, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. God, we say thank you, Father, for the word that went forth, Father. Father, we pray that it's our prayer that somebody would not leave, that they would not leave here the same way that they came, God. But God, let us be able to go out and run and tell somebody of your goodness and how you have saved, delivered, and set us all free, God. We say thank you, Father. And Father, as we depart from this place, but never from your presence, God, we ask for traveling grace, Father. Bless those that's going to travel on this evening to, to, in support of our pastor, Father. And God, we ask that we pronounce this week blessed, Father. Bless those families that are yet still suffering, Father. Bless those that are in the hospitals. Bless those that are dealing with bereavement at this hour, God. Now to him that is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before our Almighty and God, and henceforth now and forever. And the church did say... Look at somebody before you go and say, neighbor, I just can't keep it to myself. God has been too good to me. Now look at somebody and tell them you love them. Give them a hug, but don't lie.